Hello, and welcome to the Writers and Illustrators of the Future podcast. This is John Goodwin, your host. Today's guest is Illustrators of the Future winner, Josh Pemberton. Welcome, Josh. Hey, welcome. Thanks. It's a great honor to be here. Yeah, you just land at the airport and rush right in here. You haven't even checked in yet, and you're doing this interview. So uh, I saw this was floor 17, and I'm supposed to stay on 18, so this all... You're close. Head right here. You're close. Well, first of all, congratulations on being a winner. Thank you. So... um. I guess we'll get right into it. So how did you first hear about the Illustrators of the Future contest? Um, actually, one of last year's uh, Illustrator winners, Bruce Bernaysi, just told me about it. I've known him for a, a few years now, mm -hmm. and I moved back to Seattle, and we met up a few times, and he basically told me to look into this. So Good. I signed up, and here we are. And here you are. Fast forward great. a little bit, and Yeah. now I'm in Los Angeles. That's right. Hollywood, Los Angeles. Hollywood, America. So... Um, have you always wanted to be an illustrator, an artist? Yes. I didn't know that that was in what that meant. I didn't know that there was illustration. I kind of had seen some images, thought they were amazing, and wanted to figure out how to do it. And that the fact that that meant that I was becoming an illustrator was only became apparent to me fairly recently. Got it. So um, are you self-taught? Have you done courses? Have you done training? Is it, how has this evolved for you? I've done a lot of training, but I sort of came at it from a more fine art perspective like i just didn't know that there was even a, a mar i never read fantasy books growing up or was exposed to any of this wow. so when it was art it was always talked about like the old masters and then abstract expressionism and all that jazz so i ended up going i took the long way around i guess <laughs> so in, as it stands right now on your uh, what type of art do you like doing or do you envision yourself doing this whole fantastical world has always been appealing to me, so that that's a that's a target. But um, I sort of am shooting for as many different ponds as possible at the moment. Um, that makes sense. I ended up uh, because I came through the fine art route. I ended up doing like I uh, spent three years studying in an atelier up in Seattle, and sort of came away from that learning how to use traditional materials, more aiming towards gallery like collector kind of world. So I. Well, I can. I work in traditional materials like oil painting, and so if I can do book cover, publishing, any of that stuff, I'm totally going to try. But I'm going to try to continue to keep working in traditional materials. So, like selling originals, trying to keep a foot in the gallery pool a little bit as much as possible. Just yeah. that's interesting. Have you ever heard of Bob Eggleton? I've heard of him. Yes, he's going to be here. He's he's one of the cover for this, but he works in traditional. He 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 paints with oil. That's amazing. There's, uh, He's won probably more Hugo's, more uh, Chelsea uh, or Chesley Awards, more um, awards than probably any of our other judges and probably more than most artists. And he's just, he keeps himself grounded in traditional. And then on that he builds, he's, he's the go-to guy on anything Godzilla. The name definitely trickle like, I just consider that, think that I lived under a rock and didn't know anything about any of this, but... Some of the names, the big names, like floated by, so I'm familiar with it. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, that, that, wait, wait, no, what? He's here? Okay, all right, okay, let's see what this is all about. But it's all really just, yeah, that's all new for Another me. Another guy that works in, in paint is Larry Elmore. You'll be here. He's when they did all the original art for Dungeons and Dragons. So he's, he's major, he's like the dragon dude. Amazing. He's totally amazing. Dragons are, yeah, I was a, uh, I guess I would say I was a dinosaur kid growing up, but uh, yeah, so dragons was a little bit of a hop in that direction. It's, it's, it, I like drawing dragons. They're pretty, they're pretty cool. Anyway, you're going to find, you'll be able to work with some, some traditional artists, and then Echo obviously does, she paints. Uh, Rob Pryor, he's, he paints with two hands. Of course he does. Why not? Yeah, awesome. Awesome. Heavy eyes, hitters doing crazy closed. stuff. Oh, so just use a space alien just to, all right, of course, all right. Yeah. He, he's... He's insanely good. Just it's just amazing watching him paint. He he does um, paintings on major concert performers. He'll be up on the stage painting uh, while they're performing, and then present at the end of this. It's just like sure, all right. <laughs> he's, he's just he's, just, uh, he's a rock this star. This is all. This sounds ridiculous and amazing and hilarious. Yeah. And I didn't know that any of this even existed. So sure, why not? Yeah, two-handed painter. Why not? Yeah, yeah. He's here. Oh yeah, of course. Let's go exactly. for it. Exactly, exactly. Um, all right. So um, 
we've established how you moved in this direction of, of art. So tell me about the, the pieces that you submitted uh, that won the contest. Um, hmm. So I, I was exposed, I sort of made the pivot, so to speak, um, after I was exposed to Spectrum magazine mm -hmm. and kind of was, so I had an idea of like, I like this fantastical stuff. This is really uh, appealing to me, but I didn't know that it existed. So then I went and uh, after learning about that, ended up getting uh, my MFA at the Academy of Art University down in San Francisco. Um, finished that up two years ago. And so these pieces were part of my publishing illustration portfolio that I made while there. Mm -hmm. So um, I was sort of at the time trying to hit different marks a little bit, like, uh, yeah, just sort of uh, targeting different genres a bit. Yeah. So if I remember correctly, nine, yeah, um, I had a mermaid piece that was, uh, I kind of, uh, I like sort of, uh, classical um kind of going back to the source material a little bit mm -hmm. so i ended up doing something of uh like mermaids more sirens less little mermaid and a little bit more uh intimidating i'd say yeah um so that was one of them i had something that i did sort of targeting like the voodoo genre so it was like kind of a voodoo man doing like hold like sort of levitating a frog and then the last one was or well i guess this was actually the first one but um, it was sort of a, it was inspired by kind of a Midsummer's Night Dream kind of thing. So like the trickster character, kind of the fairy sort of magical chaos, a little, a little threatening also. Um, so like kind of a leaf person, kind of uh, or the leaves making a person or a person mm -hmm. coming out of the leaves, kind of reaching towards the viewer, I guess. Yeah, well, kind of. I guess that's what it was. So yeah, those are those are the three. So good. And then you did a piece for. That's that's being uh, published in volume thirty five. So tell me about that. Um, well, so they you guys paired me up for an, with an illust with a writer who I'm really excited to meet, and um, so the story is it's a little complicated. There's sort of three different narratives that are sort of coming together simultaneously through the story. So what was the name of it? Uh, are you the life of the party? And so to not give too much away, I'll try. Um, our main character, Eddie, is, spends the entire story sitting in a chair doing things, but he never leaves the chair. And so that's one of the stories is telling you, one of the lines is telling you what's going on there. Another is what he's seeing through the screens. So he's sort of uh, interact. He's, what he's doing on the or in the chair is affecting what he's seeing on the screens to other people. Mm -hmm. um, and then the final story is while he's, or the final aspect is while he's sitting in the chair, he's uh, um, sort of filling out one of those little teen uh, quizzes for like little magazine teen quiz and are you the life of the party, which is, so the last one is more of uh, what's going on in his memory and his past and it all comes together in a, uh, the story is, it packs a, packs a bit of a wallop, kind of a, have some scotch and lie down and decompress afterwards. It was uh, a, <laughs> It was a dark week thinking about it, but it was really like the more I was thinking about it, the more ideas were coming. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that's one of the things with, I mean, it's back from the Pulp Fiction days to the illustration and storytelling, how they really work well together. They, they enhance each other. I mean, illustration, not just paintings, but illustration, because the illustration itself will, will take a, a snippet of that story. And like I was like, wow, it makes, it makes you want to read the story. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of the appeal of illustration. I was always interested in how images can communicate things. Mm -hmm. And this is sort of the practical application of that in the commercial world, as far as I understand. Yeah. But I mean, there's <clears throat> countless more, but in, the, in my particular trajectory. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it, was, it was very, uh, it was, I wasn't thinking, originally I was trying to, I was thinking of making it more literal, but because the story is such a complicated web of interconnecting things, I ended up sort of targeting the mood a little bit more and right. kind of alluding to the stories rather than just sort of, because uh, the, the, the thing that I loved about the story is that it's only at the very end when you kind of understand what you've just read and it all comes together. Yeah. So I didn't really want to give it away, but I wanted to hint at it. And that was uh, a lot of fun sort of thinking of more abstract ways to hint at what was going on rather than this is Eddie. This is what he looks like sitting in a chair. It's, I don't know. It's less interesting to me at least. So Yeah, no, you did a great job of, of dealing with that story. I'm sure Michael's cool. going to love it. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. You. 
So um, you mentioned trajectory. So how do you see your trajectory going at this juncture of your life? I'm chasing all the kittens. Um, so <laughs> I like, I left grad school being uh, illustration. I'm going to chase illustration. Well, okay. Before I went to, before I did that, I started to get a little traction doing like eight foot charcoal portraits that were at the time me sort of playing or the beginning steps of me playing with a fantastical. Um, and then, so when I came back afterwards, I was like, oh, it's illustration time, but I really kind of want to do something for me a little bit. And then the guy in the studio next to me is a gilder, so gold and silver leaf. So I have some stuff, of course, then I'm chasing that kitten, which is running in an opposite direction. Still trying to chase the publishing. That is my goal. Um, but my reality is I do a lot of commissions, kind of just private commissions ranging the gamut. So I'd like to continue doing that and sure. continue to work in oil. So the more the merrier. I'll, I'll yeah, again, like you're going to meet Bob, and he's done, Bob Eggleton, he does a lot of private stuff, and he's now gone to, he even does like pastorals. Oh, yeah. It's oil, uh, you know, but he's like, he's the go-to guy for anything Godzilla. Japan calls him out to, for art direction on when they do their Godzilla movies. It's really weird because it's like these are like amazing A-list celebrities in my mind, but mm -hmm. I didn't know about it until really within the past like three years, I sort of started to break into it. And it's this really welcoming and very friendly, informative like community of people. And it's just really, uh, yeah, it's a trip. It's a trip. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing with the Illustrators of the Future contest which when it was started by Owen Hubbard back in 83 as a writer contest, and then it evolved to the illustrator contest because it was, it just seemed to be the natural thing to evolve into. The whole thing is that pay it forward mentality that writers and artists have within this genre. Oh, it's everybody's kind of sparking each other's imaginations and creativity. So the more people are out there doing, like it doesn't matter, it doesn't need to be drawings or paintings or stories just whatever it's it makes you want to do something cool and follow what you're interested in and it's all feeds into itself in a really positive and exciting yeah. way and you're going to get you know anything in particular that you're really looking forward to this week um not falling when i go up to <laughs> receive some award apparently i they sent me a video of what i actually signed up for and uh, i read and i looked at it while drinking too much coffee so i was a little more nervous than i should have been so deep breaths whatever yeah i like uh i've known I, I know a couple of the other winners very loosely so i'm just honestly really curious to see what everybody else did and wrote and talk about it and yeah compare notes and good good so um, I guess, you know, so you just arrived, so you got to, you know, you're going to have a, a week of, of workshop here with uh, Echo and uh, Lazarus, her, her husband, and yes. then um, Larry, said Larry Elmore, who's, um, he started working, I think, making uh, engravings for the U.S. Mint was his first this is, yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm like if I'm, you can't, nobody can see, this is just audio, but just, I'm like kind of freaking out about, not freaking out, but I I'm shell shocked thoroughly. This is all, yeah. You're name dropping really, really quick. It's it's impressive. I'm I'm impressed here. Yeah, and then on the writer side, we got like Orson Scott Card, the guy that wrote Ender's Game. Oh yeah, i that was the name that jumped out at me, and kind of my hair blew back a little. I was like, oh my god, I get to meet him. What he's here? Yeah, because we only ever like see the award winning kind of like held up on a pedestal off in the horizon. So it's really like fast forward a little bit and oh they're people just like the rest of that's us right. oh that's so that, cool and they're part of the contest because they they really love they, they like being able to help pay it forward and the way the contest works because it's blind judging a person wins because they really are the best well thank you and i <laughs> yeah i <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's really an honor thank you guys so much this is quite the opportunity and I'll probably be sputtering for about a week, just uh, taking it all in. We'll enjoy everything as you're, as you're sputtering. Cool. Well, thank you guys again. This is amazing. Great. Well, it was very nice meeting you, and I wish you all the best. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for our next installment of the Writers of the Future podcast. Subscribe to the Writers of the Future podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Writers and Illustrators of the Future are contests created by Elrond Hubbard to provide a means for the aspiring writer and artist to be seen and acknowledged. It is free to enter and open to new and amateur short story writers and artists of science fiction or fantasy. Mm -hmm.